fellow mathematicians, welcome to the podcast where math is figure outable. I'm Pam Harris. And I'm Kim Monaghan. And we make the case that mathematizing is not about mimicking steps or rote memorizing facts, but it's about thinking and reasoning, about creating and using mental relationships. That math class can be less like it has been for so many of us and more like mathematicians working together. We take the strong stance that not only are algorithms not particularly helpful in teaching, but that mimicking algorithms actually keeps students from being the mathematicians they can be. We answer the question, if not algorithms and step-by-step procedures, then what? So we've just finished a series of episodes for parents, and we're super grateful for everyone sharing on social media so that we can get the word out. Yeah, we really want to help more teachers and parents have access to that resource. So thanks, and please keep sharing that podcast. Parents, if you've decided to hang on with us, great. We think you'll like the rest of these two, and you are certainly welcome here. Yeah, because math is figure outable for all of us. So welcome parents, teachers, administrators, kids, anybody who wants to listen. We're going to figure out some more math, and here we go. All right. So in the past, we've talked a lot about strategies or the way that people mess with numbers, you know, the relationships that you use to solve problems. Mm -hmm. We've even done some problem strings to pull out strategies that we think are particularly helpful. But today and over the next few weeks, we want to talk about models and modeling because we think that's pretty important too. And the mm-hmm. reason why this is so important is that people often confuse the two models ah, and strategies. Yep. Yep. We've even done a whole episode on that. And that's episode number nine. What we sometimes hear is that a teacher might say, how'd you do it? And the student might say, I did a number line. And the teacher goes, oh, okay, you did a number line. Or the student might say, I did it on my fingers. And really that's the model they use, but not the strategy for how the student messed with the numbers. Yeah, so models and modeling are interesting. One mm-hmm. reason, like you said in episode nine, if you, if you didn't listen to that, you might want to go check that out. One reason, because models and modeling can get confused yeah. with strategies. Like Kim just said, we ask kids and they do something and tell us the model, but we're really interested in the strategy they were using. So y'all, models, the word model in mathematics, I think has at least eight different meanings in in mathematics education. And it doesn't even include the one rocking down the runway, (laughs) not even that meaning of model. So just in mathematics education, I think the word model can have several different meanings. And a few of those meanings are largely missing from most conversations. A few very important meanings when I talk to teachers and uh, educators of all ilk and math teacher educators are missing a couple or few of those meanings. They're missing from the conversation. And so I worry that we're talking past each other, that when we're talking about models and strategies, we're not communicating well. So I think, and we think it's important to parse out those meanings so that we can communicate well. We know what we're talking about. Yeah. So Pam, let's start off with what you're not emphasizing today. Let's get out of the way a couple of the models that we don't mean. Yeah. Okay. So what we don't mean, these can be meanings that we could talk about, but what we are going to talk about in this episode and for the next few episodes aren't these meanings. So in mathematics education, we can talk about the modeling process. Nope, not what we're going to talk about. We're not talking about, um, and and what do I mean by the modeling process? Uh, The bit where you have a situation or a scenario or data and you decide what's going on with that data. And so you create a mathematical model for the data and then you use that model to interpolate or extrapolate or, or look in the future or in between. And then you, you look back and, and you refine them. Mo- That's the modeling process, mm-hmm. sort of a scientific modeling process. It's wonderful. I believe in it. It's not what we're going to be focusing on these next few weeks. I might even use the words modeling process, but to mean something different, not the sort of scientific modeling process of creating a mathematical model to find answers or or predictions in the future. And then we refine that model. That modeling process is not what we were talking about. So another one, 
you might think about a model as like a miniature. Uh, Mm -hmm. Like I might have kids build a model house to get at scaling and proportions and measurement. Uh, You might have built a model plane as a kid. And so you might want to talk about how the dimensions are in proportion and all. Not that. It's not that tiny model sort of as a as a, a representation of the bigger one. It's not. We don't mean that one. You also might find it interesting that we don't mean model manipulative, that manipulatives as a whole, it's not what we're talking about. So when we say today we're going to talk about models, we don't mean today we're going to talk about manipulatives. Although manipulatives are models, they are, um, and we promote some of them as the models that we're going to talk about, but not carte blanche all. It's not, right. we're, well, we say it, we don't mean, so let me, to be clear, we don't mean the modeling process, the sort of scientific, find a model modeling process. We don't mean miniatures and we don't mean manipulatives. Yeah. And here's another one that we don't mean, right? We don't mean to model demonstrate. Oh yeah. <laughs> right? Like <laughs> yep. here's, here's exactly what you do. Um, these are the steps or the procedures. Here's how you copy me. It's kind of in line with the, I do, we do, you do. In other words, let me model demonstrate how to do something. Copy me. That's not what we mean. Yeah. And I'll just tell you, um, when we write that, we actually write the word model dash demonstrate yeah. because we're so clear that that meaning of the word model is like really rampant in math yeah. education. And that's probably the one, like those other ones we use, like we, we believe in the modeling process. We believe in miniatures. We I think there's a place to use those. There's a place to use manipulatives. We don't use model demonstrate very much. Uh, however, can I give just a really quick, uh, we sure. do, we do model demonstrate teacher moves. Yeah. We do model demonstrate mathematical behavior. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, we model demonstrate mathematical mindsets yep. of growth mindsets. So we do model demonstrate some things, but not how to do, like Kim said, steps. Right. All right. So another one that we don't mean, and this one we're going to spend a little bit more time on. We don't mean the CRA, concrete representational abstract or concrete pictorial abstract, that modeling process or modeling uh, setup. We don't mean that. So it is a thing in math education to talk about how first we need kids to like feel what's going on. So we give them the concrete thing. So that's the concrete, that's the C of CRA. So we give them manipulatives, we give them tool uh, things to hold, like, to, to move, to mess around with. We, we act out the problems concretely. And then we represent that. So instead of we give them counters and that's the concrete. And then we represent that. That's the R in CRA or or pictorial, we represent those with pictures. And so we sort of draw the manipulatives that we just had. And now we can sort of see what we were just doing with the, those concrete things now in a picture. And then we sort of move that to abstract. That's the A in CRA, abstract. Now we represent that with numbers. So now we write down the numerals or the symbols that represent what we were just doing in the pictures. And the pictures are representing what we were just doing concretely. That's CRA. We don't mean that today either. In our series that was going to start today in our next few episodes, we are not talking about CRA. We're not talking about doing something concretely, then representational, then abstract. All too often, CRA leads to the algorithm or leads to procedures. It leads to step-by-step things. And we have said to ourselves, God, don't understand why these kids don't understand that, why they can't do these procedures. All right. Maybe, maybe if we do it concretely and then we do it pictorially uh, represent represent it, and then we do it abstract. Okay. Now we get some, some better results. Let's be clear. We get some better results. We don't get really great results. We do get some better results. If that's your goal. If your yeah. goal is to get your kids to do procedures, okay, maybe then you should do CRA because you'll get somewhat better results. Not our goal. Yeah. So we just said a lot of, or you just said a lot of things that we <laughs> don't mean, right? Like getting some of those, you said there's eight, at least eight different kinds. So let's dive into what we do mean. Yeah. So in this episode and the next few episodes, we want to really dial into Uh, an understanding of models and modeling that has everything to do with a modeling process that we really like. And it comes from, golly, a few places. Uh, I first learned about it in Young Mathematicians at Work by Kathy Fazio and Martin Dolk. 
They built it on the Realistic Mathematics Education, RME, work from the Freudenthal Institute, where they talk about emerging models and a few other sort of bigger ways of saying that. But in in short, we like to think about this three-part framework, three-part framework to think about modeling. So that three-part framework is that first, we make a model of the situation a model of what's happening, a model of the context. That's part one. And part two is then as we ask kids to think, we do a model of their thinking, a representation of their thinking. So however they're actually messing with the numbers, the problem, then we make a model of their thinking. And then third, that model becomes a model for thinking or as a tool for thinking. And this is a process. Let me just repeat it really quickly. It's a model of the situation, then a model of thinking, a representation of thinking. And then that model becomes a model for thinking as a tool for thinking. In order to think, we use that model for thinking. This is the modeling framework that we want to focus on for the next few episodes. Yeah. And you know, even in that progression that you just mentioned, it's, I think, important to note that when we talk about um, a model of thinking, that's going to mean teachers first modeling students thinking before students begin to model their own thinking. And, mm, and I think yeah. we've mentioned this before, right? The idea that what kids can do in their heads is so much more than what they're able to verbalize. And that's so much more than what they can represent. So we have to model for them first before they can model themselves. Yeah, and I'm actually going to give you credit for that addition, Kim. In fact, if you read about this this process we just talked about, this framework, you don't really catch that that we kind of actually maybe think of it more as a four-part framework. Yeah. So it begins with the model of the situation, and then we do the model of thinking, the representation of thinking. But in that, there's sort of two things that happen. It's the model of thinking where the teacher represents the student thinking. And then we say to the kids, hey, or we say, as we do that, we say to kids, okay, see, when your brain does that, it could look like this. Then we say to them, hey, when your brain just did that, can you, can you represent that? Remember, you've, been, you've seen me model your thinking. Now it's your turn. You represent your thinking. But they're not actually using it as a tool yet. They're like, okay, my brain just did this. You want me to make that visible. Um, okay, I've seen you do that to my thinking. All right, now, I'll, okay, let's see if I, and they, that, that has to, they have to take some time to do that. That's not just a, oh, I've seen you do it and I can do it. That, that, that takes a minute for that, a hot minute for them to be able to do that. Then there's that sort of last bit where after time and with lots of experience, that model become, can become a tool for thinking. Uh, uh, it helps them in order to think. Yeah. So, so Kim, you're the first one that sort of brought up both these ideas of uh, that kids can, we, we can all do more than we can say clearly, and we can all say more than we can represent clearly. And because of that, we sort of have to help kids in that middle step. We model their thinking first, and then they can sort of use that to model their own thinking, represent their own thinking. Yeah. So um, let's give an example with a progression that we use a lot in workshops, actually. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. So we do a thing with packs and sticks of gum. So yeah. we, we call it the sticks of gum sort of scenario and we do a problem string with it. As so a very first, we list the numbers of packs and the numbers of sticks. So we might say in a pack in this particular kind of gum, we've got 17 sticks of gum. Then we give people, students, participants, a lot of problems to solve using that, uh, that scenario. So we've got a pack of gum with 17 sticks and we represent what they do. And so if they add numbers of packs together and numbers of sticks together, then we represent that. If they scale, they double the number of packs, then we double the number of sticks. We represent that on the ratio table. So as they add or subtract packs and sticks, and as they scale number of packs and sticks, we represent what they're doing. That's sort of step two. So the first step, this idea of the a model of the situation, we write down a table and we keep track of, hey, in one pack, there's 17 sticks. And in that table, we represent the context, what's happening in the scenario. As they solve the problems that we give them, we represent their thinking using scaling marks, using brackets. We draw all over that, that ratio table. And, and we say, oh, look, let me let me make your thinking visible. Then we ask participants, hey, could you show me, students, could you show me what you're doing in a ratio table? 
And they might go, ah, oh, I mean, I've seen you do that. I guess what I just did, let's see, what would that look like? And then they represent their thinking. Then we want them, the goal is to get that ratio table to become a tool for them to think with. That Then when we give them problems, they actually begin to sort of use the table as a tool to actually uh, compute, to do the reasoning. Instead of just doing the reasoning in their head and then looking at the table, they're actually using the table as a tool to think with. Yeah, and that's different from CRA. Yeah, it's totally different from CRA. Let me give you an example of what CRA might look like. So if I was uh, going to do a problem with addition, uh, some addition problem, a CRA might look like, I say to kids, okay, let's take the concrete base 10 blocks, create each of the numbers. Now we're going to pull them together and we're going to trade all those. Uh, we have a, a bunch of extra tens and so we'll trade them and make a hundred. We have a bunch of extra ones or units and we'll trade those to make some tens. And then at the end, we sort of read off the answer. Like how, what did we end up with? And then that's kind of the answer. And, and, uh, and, and then, so once we've done all that with the concrete, then we draw that. So the first step in CRA is the concrete, the C concrete, and then the R, the representational, then we, we uh, draw pictures of what we just did. We draw mm -hmm. all of the, all of the flats and the rods and the, and the units. And then we do the trading and we draw all that trading. And then again, we sort of read off the answer at the end uh, uh, off the picture. And then we say to them, so now it's time for us to do that all symbolically. So we've done it concretely with all the cubes and stuff. Then we drew them all and we did that pictorially. Now it's time to draw those with numbers. And so now we just write down the numbers and we say, look, see, look, here are like the cubes over here in the, in the tiny. And we, and then when we trade it up, look, that's the little one that you put up here. And, and we then make the symbols for what we just did with the concrete and the, and the pictures. And now we do it with symbols and that's the abstract. Well, but notice, notice what that end goal was. That end goal was that step-by-step -step procedure. It was that algorithm. Yeah. We're not about that end goal, step-by-step -step procedures. We are about using relationships, just like mathematicians do. Yeah. So a couple of important points in kind of closing. Kids don't know how to model represent their thinking at first. So teachers need to do that for them until they've had enough experience to do that for themselves. And we want to do it on a model that we eventually want them to use that model as a tool. And we'll continue to parse out how this is different from C CRA in the next few episodes. Yeah, so this is very important to sort of understand that we are kind of differentiating the goals of CRA versus our goals. Yeah. We're not dogging what good people tried to do with CRA. We're not saying, oh, it's bad. We're, we're, we're not dogging that. We're saying, what's your goal? Is your goal step-by-step -step procedures? Or, uh, maybe that we would support you using CRA. Not our goal. Our goal is thinking and reasoning and mathematizing. And so we're going to advocate this different setup for models and modeling. So, if you want to learn more math and refine your math teaching so that you and students are mathematizing more and more, then join the Math is Figureoutable movement and help us spread the word that math is figureoutable.